I'm going to show you how I use two of my most favorite tools in my secondary English classroom. My name is Tamara Hancock. I'm a high school English teacher and welcome to YouTube PD. <laughs> One of the things I try to do in my classroom is make sure that all of my instructions are very clear and that all of my students know where we are or what we're doing at any given moment. So I use two tools to do this in my classroom, and these two tools are embeddable in multiple other platforms, and we'll show you that too. So the first one that I want to show you here is Classroom Screen. Classroom Screen has both free and paid versions. Full disclosure, I do pay for Classroom Screen because it saves my screens for me. But if you don't mind resetting your screen every day, the free version will work just fine. Let me show you what Classroom Screen does. So I have my screen set up. This is my classroom screen that my students actually see every single day. In the classroom screen, I have the objectives and plan for the week. This is my lesson planning for the week. I also have our class set up. This is where they look at to see any class activities that we are doing for the day. This class setup and this screen here are both located in Canvas. They're both embedded in Canvas, and that is a whole separate video. I will, I will link that later. But these are both separate screens that are set up in Google Slides. So each of these is located in my classroom screen. And I also have different pieces of information, such as our graduation countdown, um, because I teach seniors, um, end of semester countdown, next break countdown. And sometimes I have, if we have a big assignment coming up due, I also have a countdown to that assignment. So they have um, an idea of how many days they know they need to do that. In here, um, this is a text block. If you'll see this one right here that I've moved, some of the pieces on classroom screen will be able to sit on top of other pieces. So like this one, it's a picture frame. It can go on top of other pieces. And this one, it's a text box that I can place on top of other pieces just for organization purposes. And then these countdowns also can go on top of other portions. So uh, that way, if you wanted to set it up in that type of way. Usually I project this classroom screen onto my projector in my classroom or onto my smart board and it is touchable and I can use the different links or different things. Let me show you some of the cool things that I've done. Down here at the bottom, you have a menu of items of things that you can include on your classroom screen. So for example, today we had a sustained silent reading period in my classroom. So I have a timer that I put up and you can change the time on the timer to as long as you want it to be, and then start the timer, it will count down for you. And as soon as the timer goes off, your students are aware that their silent sustained reading time is over. It also has this countdown so they can see it visually. And this circle here will also work to become incomplete. In order to change the different sounds, you can go to the settings. Here, let me move myself over here. You can go into the settings and there are different sounds that can be played from a menu of, of items here. Other things that I really like about the classroom screen menu or different items that I use on the classroom screen menu are going to be the clock, which believe it or not, this piece right here, that is a classroom screen clock that just stays updated so students know what time it is. And I also have um, under more, again, let me move myself here. There is a stopwatch that you can put up if you have a QR code for any type of assignment or any type of thing that they need to do. Um, we have a bathroom pass that you can scan via QR code so I can put the QR code on my screen and they can just scan it and go. We also have Group Maker. Group Maker is really cool. You open the settings, you can type a list of things that, or student names. Um, I'm just gonna say milk, bread, and cheese. Um, and then I hit continue it will create the groups. So I only have three items on there, so I'm gonna create two groups. And if I hit create group, it's gonna go ahead and sort those students into groups for me. So I don't have to go, okay, who wants to be in what group? I just have a list of students and it creates the groups and now the students know what group they're in. You can also shuffle the groups and it will redo the group. The next thing that I really enjoy with the classroom screen is I can do, um, a visual timer. I can embed videos from YouTube or other locations. I can also have dice, which is super fun um, if we're trying to 
scientific game. I know math teachers sometimes use dice for other games, but if you're trying to do, let's make a choice and we do it with dice, you can do that as well. Another feature of classroom screen that I use quite often is down here, you can set multiple pages for your classroom screen that you can flip through. One thing that can be really difficult for teachers, especially secondary teachers who have multiple class periods is having the ability to flip between different programs with ease without having to go back to your computer and resetting or go through the different tabs. So you can set up different screens for each class period. So this is a class period where I gave instructions on how to do a six word story. I gave examples of the six word story and I was able to just flip to this screen and say, here's an example, rather than going back to my computer and redoing things. Embedding videos in classroom screen is super easy as well. You can come here, you click on video and to get your YouTube link, you just go to YouTube we're just gonna select a video. So um, sure, the Hogwarts, great. We're gonna click share. We're gonna copy this link right here. We're gonna go back to classroom screen and put it in there. And when I add the video, now the video is added to the screen. It is cached. And every time you come to this screen, it is not going to play an ad. So you don't have to worry about it playing ads that are inappropriate to be shown in your classroom. The video is all that will play. You can also resize the video, make it smaller or larger, um, depending on your needs for the screen. So now that I've shown you how I use classroom screen and the different things that I do with it, I want to show you how I embed these two different Google slides into my classroom screen. So the first thing I do is I do have these Google slides that I create every day. And again, that's another video, but the Google slides that I create every day, they are both embedded into our Canvas dashboard, but also into my classroom screen. And here's how I do it. So first I'm going to go to more. I'm going to get myself out of the way again, and I'm going to click embed. In order to grab this embed code, let's go ahead and go to my Google slide. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna to go to file, share, and publish to web. With publish to web, you will go ahead, you have link and you have embed. I'm gonna click on embed. And then I'm not gonna worry about these settings here and I'm just gonna grab this code that is down here. Go back to classroom screen and paste it into the embed and then hit run code. And now you'll see I have another duplicate copy of my screen here. But what if you don't want the menu bar here to be at the bottom? I can show you how to take that off too. You'll notice this right here is a Google slideshow that I have set up and it's playing to advance every three seconds. And, and I didn't want the menu bar at the bottom. I was able to get rid of that and let me show you how to do that. So if you go to settings here, going to open the code and when you look at it you'll see it says embed with a question mark right here you're going to say rm equals minimal with an ampersand when you do that and then save it gets rid of that menu bar at the bottom and there you have it you can embed your google slides into your classroom screen Thank you again for joining me today. If you've used any of these tools in your classroom, please let me know. Or if you have any tools that you use in your classroom you think I would find helpful, let me know that too, and I'll try to do a video on those. Again, if this is something you enjoy, please like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you on the next YouTube PD, which is hopefully a PD that doesn't suck. Have a good night. Be good, be safe, have fun. Don't talk to strangers, and I'll see you tomorrow.